Assembly will come to order. Could you please uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Will, will do, my pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask everybody just to remain standing for a minute. We're not going to be here on 9-11, but I would like to take this time to remember all the people that died on 9-11 and for all the first responders that gave their life. Thank you. Please review the minutes while we have our law enforcement report. Hi, good morning, everyone. Beautiful uh, pre-Labor Day weekend. So hopefully everybody has a, a wonderful uh, weekend uh, this, this upcoming weekend, celebrating with uh, family and friends. I just want to let you know, um, hurricane season, we dodged a, a big one here. Unfortunately, our friends and neighbors in the Panhandle got affected by the recent hurricane at Dali up there. So again, um, because I, I like to preach to the choir, make sure your hurricane plans are, are set. Um, you have your, your paperwork, you have copies of everything you need. You're, especially with insurance now in the state of Florida, our rates have gone up uh, dramatically. So make sure you have all your insurance up to date, all your documents copied and saved somewhere where they're accessible. Uh, make sure you have uh, your supplies, your batteries, your flashlights, food. Check on your neighbors um, as you make your runs to Publix and Walmart. You know, grab extra bottles of water. You never know if you may need it. Also make sure your vehicles are fueled just in case. Um, you know, where we're at at this part of the county, I don't see, you know, evacuation orders. Yeah. But just in case you, you need to move to higher ground or something happens or you can go, go stay with uh, friends and family somewhere else if we get impacted by a storm. Now's the time to do it. September's a very busy month. So just, just be aware, and I'll turn over the crime report to Lieutenant Hood. Thank you. Good morning. All right. We'll start here with the traffic report for Century Village. Uh, as of today for the month of August, we accounted for 37 traffic stops, 45 citations, 10 written warnings, and two verbal warnings. And we did count one hit and run in the village. And we're going to move over to the crime stats, or the, actually the cases reported. So we had 215 calls for service in the village, and out of those 215 calls, 34 cases were actually reported. So the vast majority of the calls that we stated kind of here month to month are normally 911 calls that deputies respond to and may or may not involve a crime of any sorts or any action is needed. And the cases of interest, okay, we had one report of a vehicle burglary, uh, two reports of theft. But then I want to get down to the fraud. Uh, last time I was here, we discussed fraud. We had uh, two other major cases of fraud recently in the month of August. We had one situation where a lady lost, um, trying to download a Wells Fargo app and lost $7,000, okay? And then uh, we had another victim here uh, with Microsoft. Microsoft, she received a, an alert on her computer, contact, 1-800 uh, number. She did do the con contact 1-800 number, but unfortunately for her, it was scammers. And she, through her Bitcoin account, gave up $50,000. Okay. So we're constantly here, and we have the financial crime unit um, that has taken over that case. Our de detectives are involved as well. But fraud tends to be a, you know, a current issue that we're still seeing here in the village. And the other call for service was just a minor animal call, but just to be aware, there was a lady walking her dog and her dog was attacked by raccoons. We responded to that as well. Okay. And uh, that's it for the cases of interest. Okay. Any, any questions? All right, we'll be at one o'clock meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. See you then. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Oh, Jerry, you have something you want to say? With regard to that microscope scam, uh, it happens on my computer a number of times. And basically what you do is you shut the computer off, you disconnect the modem for about 30 seconds, restart everything, and that scam disappears. So it's very, very, don't, do not like call that number. Just disconnect the computer, shut it off for 30 seconds or for a minute, boot it back on, it comes right up. Even though they say don't shut it off, that that's what you do and it's gone when, as soon as the computer reboots itself. 
Thank you, Jerry. Are there, uh, I'll entertain a motion for, to accept the minutes as presented. Made by George, second by Lenny Seltzer. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Yes. Go ahead, Bob. All right. Um, last month, I, uh, you guys omitted the uh, call for David Israel to step down. All right. He's been gone, it's what, eight months now? He has not been at a delegate assembly. And if I recall, the bylaws state that if you miss three, Goodbye. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing anything. Well, actually, to remove an officer, there, there is a procedure, Bob. Right. And that, and that procedure was changed, in my opinion, to, to uh, avoid getting anyone out of office. It used to be 25 signatures needed on a, on a, uh, on a petition. Now it's 100 delegates. Mm -hmm. All right, if you get 100 delegates to sign it, it should be automatic, <laughs> all right? Because if you, if you gotta have to, go, you have to go, th you only need, what, 116 signatures to, for a quorum, or 116 people for a, for a quorum, but yet you need 100 signatures to get an officer out of office that should not be there anymore, all right? All right. I, I, now, David's my was my friend, all right, and he did a good job over the years. I commend him for what he's done, but he's been ill. He has not been in, off in, in uh, the office in what, eight months, ten. nine months, 10 months. What? Oh, it's 10. Oh. He's so, still, I, I can tell you that he's still actively working. Even though he's not in the office, he does attend meetings. Okay, well, and he's well aware you're of taking the word of the CAM no. Every time, just about. Can, just I, about. As an officer, I could tell you that he does participate. We have a quorum of 121 delegates. Thank you. Richard, just okay. a question. Yes, Richard. On the, um, the vote down the bottom of the page, it says votes received 144, needed to pass 70. Just clarify, I mean, I would think that would require 73 votes to pass. Am I, it's up to you. Yeah, that, I, I, I believe that's just a, something that the computer spit out, but we'll make the correction. Thank you, Richard. Anything else pertaining to the minutes? Good. All in favor of accepting the minutes as corrected? You don't have to vote it. No, okay. You don't. Good. Less for me to do. All right. Um, there are, there's a couple of interesting uh, flyers in, in your package this month. Uh, one of them is a pill drop and then something else regarding to the channels 590, 591, and 592, which you'll hear a little bit later on. Please post these uh, flyers on your bulletin board so that your unit owners are aware of what's going on. Uh, we'll go to uh, officers' reports. We'll start with Patricia. Oh, that's a shock. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is feeling fine. I'm glad to be here. I don't know why, but I am. I think I, I, I'm think I'm going to be recalled. No. Anyway, um, I know a lot of people have given me complaints for the buses, and I have passed them on. I really wish some of you would attend the meeting that I have on the first Tuesday of the month, if you can. If you feel that your complaint wasn't addressed, please come in, see me, fill out another form, and we'll get it over to them. Because I'm not sure who he has called and who he hasn't. He said he was taking care of the complaints. And I won't have any way of knowing unless you let me know. I really do care. We are still tweaking the schedule a little bit. We can't really do a lot, but there's a stop that was left out that we insisted on putting back again, the one to uh, Wells Fargo and Keneva. So um, doing the best I can. I don't own the bus company. Just be a little patient, but let me know. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day. Thank you. Stuart. 
This is less of a, a report, more of as an observation. Uh, I've been living in Century Village for 28 years, and months before the uh, election for officers, we just seem to have uh, so many people wanting to run for office. And uh, what's happening is that the demographics here at Century Village have changed, and many, many people are not interested in getting involved in the administration of UCO and the affairs of Century Village. So I would like to ask the people sitting here, if you know anybody that is uh, interested in running, please have them consider it and come down and sign their name and uh, run for office because we, we need uh, new people with, uh, um, with the ideas that will keep the village running as smoothly as it is now. And uh, I also hope that Alga changes her mind and considers to run. I mean, I, we, we talk about this all the time, and she's saying no, 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 but I hope maybe she'll say yes, yes, yes. And that's my report. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Joanne. Good morning, everybody. Um, my report this month is regarding the community access television stations. The flyer that's attached this, uh, this month is bringing your attention to the fact that um, we've started to update the content on 590, 591, and 592. You'll see a lot of changes happening. The biggest one right now is over the weekend. We do classic movies on 592 that I've gotten some feedback on and people are enjoying it. It's just something different, a little chuckle over the weekend if you go into 590, tune into 592 and just see how you like it. Um, uh, there's also um, an email address there, CVTV admin, and that's for any suggestions you have when you look at it. Um, feel free to tell me how you feel about it. I'm taking care of the content. I'm learning as I go. So um, it's up to all of us to, you know, put on there what is going to be valuable to us. Um, I'm also looking for people that want to volunteer some time to help me with producing content. Uh, the season's coming, and what we want to try and do is get around to all the live events, get some people to take pictures, and maybe do some videos, um, but to revitalize things, to start to make those channels more, um, you know, current, what we're doing, what we're all about. So please feel free to contact me through that CBTV admin, and I'll be happy to respond. And that's it. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not happy with that applause. Joanne has done an outstanding job. We had stuff on those channels since COVID was up. So the stuff that's on there is current. Make it, make yourself aware if you have new people in your building and they want to know what's going on in Century Village, tell them to watch those channels. David, just in time, you're up. Good morning, all. Thanks for a wonderful turnout on a holiday weekend. Uh, it's been a nice month, and I can't wait to start hammering the potato salad and coleslaw coming on Monday. Wish everybody a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. Um, let's go for the Yuko Reporter Report. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I have a nice report for you. Through July 22nd, we are ahead 944 a month, or $6,600 for the seven months. On the report that you got separately, that goes a day further. So we picked up another $17 a month. We're in good shape. <clears throat> I want to wish everybody a happy Labor Day. Hope you, if you have plans, the weather will be good. Happy Grandfather's Day on the 10th. And to those who celebrate the Jewish New Year, 
that's on 15th to the 17th. Have a sweet new year. And Yom Kippur is on 924, your Day of Atonement. And that's the end of September. I'll see you on October 6th at the next delegate meeting. That's all I got. Okay, uh, we're going to get rude next. Donald, cam report, please. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, actually, nothing significant to report this month, just two announcements in case they didn't come up before I came in. Um, Yuko will be closed on Monday for Labor Day. The clubhouse will be closed this coming Wednesday, the 6th, and for the morning of Thursday, the 7th. And that's for uh, paving work that's going to be happening at the front of the clubhouse. Um, you'll be able to see uh, that on our, our TV station and, and on the blog. Um, that's all I have for this month, unless someone has any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you, Donald. Uh, Ed, you're up. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's very nice that we were able to have a quorum on the day before a holiday. Um, I'd just like to say that, as I read in the paper, that Dominic will no longer be attending, uh, obviously for a reason, and uh, I think we will all miss what he had to contribute to Yugo for a long, long time. So I think you should give him a round of applause. Dominic, Dominic. Going further. Say something. I will. I will. Go, going further, uh, please note that this month we have the finance meeting, which is going to prepare our annual budget for next year. And as I did last year, I invite everybody, whether you're on a committee or not, if you'd like to contribute a comment, something you think should be done, something you think shouldn't be done, I would ask you if you have a pen and pencil. Uh, if not, I'll give it to you at the end of the meeting to contribute to the input. And I know there's holidays coming up, but since our meeting, the finance meeting, is well into the month, I believe I will have a special meeting before that meeting. As far as this month's operation, lo and behold, for whatever reason, we came out with a few bucks profit, and we're still doing fine, over 11 million and change in our reserve account. I think that has come down, actually, because of a three-quarter of a million dollar uh, withdrawal for the operation of the uh, golf course. I welcome anybody who has any comments at all times. Let me know because quite frankly for other reasons I'm not in the office every day. But I'm always reachable and again if anybody wants it I'll give it again. My phone number if you have is 631-742 1300. Other than that, we will hope to go forward and have a great year for the rest of the year and for next year. And good health to everybody. Okay. He will announce it. Ed will announce his meetings, dates. Do you have those dates available now, Ed? He doesn't have those set dates, but when they are available. Well, you have the holidays coming. No, I know what they were asking. Uh, right now, I don't have it. I have to check with my other half because she's constantly uh, out at doctors and whatever. So, and going forward for another operation. Sorry to hear that. So, I will let you know and they could always post it on the blog or give me a call or 
Again, if you brought anything, you could email me at Edward R. Grossman at gmail.com. Thank you. Right. Does anybody have any other comments at this point? Thank you all. And okay. let's go forward with this. Morning. All right. Uh, an update on Dominic. Dominic is having some issues. He has gone for some testing, and he's waiting for um, a medical opinion as to where he stands. Uh, he's been coming in the office when he feels that he can help us out, but he's not here. He is still an officer and will be an officer until either he is replaced or resigns. As of right now, he has not resigned. Just keep him in your prayers. That's the best thing that we could do. And he does put a lot of in input into what goes on in Century Village and has for many years. Uh, do we have any unfinished business? No unfinished business. Do we have any new business? I have a yes, ma'am. There's a microphone in the back. There's two microphones. I was looking at the profit and loss what? statement, and I'm wondering about... Speak uh, into the microphone so Ed could hear you. Okay. I was wondering about the background reports. Cost us $65,000, but when I came here, we had to pay for our own background report, so I'm just wondering about that. What is she talking about? It's item 7307. You want to take that or you want me to do it? Yeah, no, I, I can grab it. Um, yes, uh, the line item you're seeing there is for the fees that we pay to an investigation agency. The name is Scott Robertson Associates. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the basically a compilation of the invoices that we receive each month. Um, that's separate from our income, which is each uh, applicant or applicant married couple pays now $150. So there's a rough offset there. Um, my understanding is that there is usually a surplus, and that, use, that surplus is used to pay for the legal opinions, which each association is, is entitled to get from the UCO attorney if you have questions about the uh, a report. So uh, ultimately, it's a wash. OK, thank you. And then um, it talked about interest income, $134. Well, and Anything to do with interest, I'm going to leave to my CPA, Ed, Ed Grossman. Go for it, Ed. Don't think that interest is a dirty word. Oh, I don't. I'm wondering you why it's so little. You know who's been pushing to get a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of interest into our reserves. <laughs> but as Donald says, not everything we do is geared to make a profit and or a loss. A lot of what Yuko does is to make life better for our owners and residents. You can't please everybody, but you try the best you can. Okay, thank you. Very good. Anything else under? There's somebody out there. Back. Yes, go ahead. I, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not sure if this is the right time to say this, but I'm, um, concerned about all the coyotes that are getting into Century Village. I've heard that there's uh, places in the fence that have not been fixed. Nobody seems to want to fix them. Uh, people walking their dogs are getting attacked by coyotes. Cats are being walked around in coyotes' mouths. Uh, I think it's a problem here, and I think it needs to be addressed. I don't know why it hasn't been. Donald? Hi, uh, ma'am, uh, just a word on coyotes. There is nothing new about coyotes in Century Village. Um, they've been here for, since I'm a little kid. Um, most, of the, most of the people that live here will never see one because they tend to operate at night. I see them regularly because I'm typically out before sunrise driving the village. Um, what's bringing a lot of the attention to it is that many people have purchased uh, cameras, ring cameras, and the coyotes run right by, and, and that's what we're seeing pictures of, people, a coyote running across someone's doorway. 
Um, for the most part, these animals are native uh, wildlife. Uh, it, the Florida Wildlife uh, tells us that they're um, not a threat to people. Um, I have heard unsubstantiated reports here in Century Village of a, of, of a cat being taken away by a coyote, um, feral cat, feral coyote, these things happen. Um, I have seen it on other properties where, where cats, you know, Fluffy got dragged off by a, by a coyote on, on, on a camera. Not, not nice to see. Um, as far as the fencing goes, um, this community was never fully fenced, um, and it isn't to this day. The fence that I believe you are referring to on the north uh, boundary of our um, community was put up by, um, it was one of Yuko's first large projects in 1983. Um, that was never intended to stop a coyote or any kind of other animal. The, the basically, animals walk through those fences as if they weren't there. Um, the, the North Canal fence was destroyed by FPL about five years ago, and um, for budgetary and other reasons, a decision was made not to um, replace the fence. Uh, we do have budget for fence replacement, and I believe in this coming budget, I'll be asking Ed to um, uh, put in for replacement of a, another wrecked out section of fence that we are a little concerned about in the Windsor section along South Canal. So um, I just want to put your mind at ease about coyotes. I don't think that you really have a problem here. Statewide, coyote attacks aren't a thing. Um, and, that, and that's pretty much it. All right. Do you have any other questions, ma'am? Um, well, yeah. Well, um just out of curiosity, uh, people don't seem to ride the buses that much. I wonder why they're so big. Couldn't we have smaller buses? That's a, that's a very good question. Bigger um, and better. In the past, with previous vendors, we did have what's known as a jitney bus, a minibus. Um, when this vendor proposed, they only proposed these, what they're called transit buses. And the um, co the transportation committee followed by the officers, executive board, and you, the delegate assembly, um, chose to go with that vendor. So that goes with the, this this contract. Um, we don't own the buses. We don't we don't maintain the buses. Uh, the the vendor su supplies them, and that's what this vendor supplies. All right. So it wouldn't be less expensive to get smaller buses. Actually, um, be more it, expensive. It was it, in in the last bidding, um, the company that bid these with smaller buses was high bid and this this was a lower bid okay thank you you're and welcome one more thing sure I'm, I'm with Ed Grossman I think we should be getting a lot more interest uh, on our reserve funds okay thank um, you. obviously there is um, there is legal opinion and, uh, and other opinions on um, using Yuko or, or community funds as a, in a speculative nature a risk nature um, we should be beyond uh, conservative when it comes to these things. That's my opinion, and it's, and it's others as well. Um, but this is a group decision, and it, it ultimately it starts in the finance committee, and then it goes to the officers committee, and, and moves on from there. Okay. Right? Well, yeah, treasury bills are not speculative. Yeah. Um, again, not an expert on um, on investment products. But if there's any risk at all from a manager's perspective, um, I don't think we should be in the business of, of taking any risk with a, with a, but again, not my decision to make. It, it starts in committees and, and moves on from there. All, all right. right. Uh, can I get information on how to contact the committee, the finance Absolutely. You sit, ne you sit next to it. I'm sitting next Great. to it right here. <laughs> okay. This is Ed Grossman. He's the chair of the, uh, a treasurer, and he's the chair of the uh, finance committee. And you're welcome to attend that meeting. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Anything else under uh, new business? Terrific. Commissioner Weiss, you've got the floor. Uh, it's all good. Caught you off guard. Yeah, you did. 
Well, first off, what an honor it is to be with you this morning, and good morning, everybody. I am Greg Weiss, and have the real honor and privilege to represent Century Village on the Board of County Commissioners, so thank you for giving me that honor and, and privilege. Um, just a couple things, and, and uh, first off, it is uh, Labor Day is coming up uh, this weekend, and uh, just this country was built on the backs of labor. So I just want to acknowledge and celebrate everybody um, who has helped to build this country. And secondly, uh, as was mentioned earlier, we are now really into the high peak season of hurricane season and how important it is to be ready and be prepared. Make sure you have supplies on hand. We're talking about no longer is two days supply. You should have five days and better, more is better. But most importantly, your medications. Make sure you have an adequate supply to keep your medications on hand. Uh, if, God forbid, uh, we have a hurricane that comes in through our area and things get shut down, uh, we wanna make sure everybody is able to, to, number one, be safe, but number two, be able to help take care of themselves um, for a few days. Um, that's really all I have for you today. Um, there's, uh, um, you know, we, we are moving forward with our budget. We have, as you know, we reduced our millage. Uh, so if you have a homesteaded property in Palm Beach County and you had a, a, a homestead exemption the year previously, your county portion, operating portion of your tax bill is actually going to be less than it was last year. So we're working hard to keep the costs in, in check. Uh, we know it's challenging. Uh, inflation has been challenging for folks. So with that, I, that's all I have to report and uh, look forward. If there are any questions, happy to take them. Um, not yet. You get, you get to know more. Okay. All right. Well, it's an honor to serve you, and we'll see you all again next month. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. I would like to thank Mr. Hamericks, uh, Mayor Weiss's chief of staff, for implementing the process to get a bus shelter right outside the Haverhill exit. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Amy from uh, Ann Gannon's office would like to say a few nice words about your taxes. <laughs> okay. Obviously, taller people were here before me. Um, good morning, everyone. I am Amy Eberspach from Constitutional Tax Collector Ann Gannon's office. And I know at the beginning of August, you all received your trim notices in the mail. And we are getting geared up and prepared to send out your tax bills in November. So round of applause for your tax bills. Yay. Um, also, I wanted to add, you know, we do have multiple ways you can pay. And I know there's a lot of concerns people have about putting checks in the mail when you see all the news reports. So our options, if you don't want to put a check in the mail, we, of course, can pay online. You can pay via an e-check, which is a secure method to pay. Also, each of our six service centers do have secure drop boxes that we check daily. You can just drop your check into there. And of course, you can always make a reservation to come into our offices and pay in person. That one does take a little bit of time because it takes a little bit of time to get that reservation. But just wanted to remind you of all these options. Thank you so much, and everyone have a fabulous Labor Day. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a gentleman here, Greg Lerman. He is running for ju a judgeship. State attorney, I'm sorry. I think he remembers 2016 when I did run for judge. <laughs> uh, and I was here a lot back then, and you'll be seeing me a lot um, over the next 12 months, at least probably once a month. My name is Greg Lerman. I'm running for state attorney. Um, I want to follow up just, and I'll talk real briefly about what the lieutenant said. One of my primary issues is elder fraud. Even last night, I met with somebody whose 90 year old um, stepmother had lost $100,000 recently. Mm -hmm 
to a sweepstakes fraud. Elder fraud is underreported, and when reported, it's underprosecuted because the current office thinks that it's just too difficult to prosecute. I'm telling you, if I'm elected state attorney, elder fraud is going to be one of my number one priorities. It needs to be dealt with. People need to be educated about it. And when they lose money, they need to have some opportunity or at least attempt to get their money back. And those people who take it need to be prosecuted. So I look forward to seeing you. And I look forward to getting your vote in a year from now. Yes, a year from now. But there's three of us. And the campaign season has already started. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go to the order. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Varissa from the port of Palm Beach. Hi, I'm Commissioner Varissa Laldas. It's like Marissa with a V, Varissa. That's how you say it. Um, so it's it's so nice to uh, to be here. I just wanted to give you some quick updates. Um, we really, really loved having you guys in June. I'm trying to plan another port tour um, and we just voted on the budget so uh, one of the one of the things that I had requested to be put in the budget was um, uh, some some expenditures and some monies for a bus so I'm happy to uh, to announce that we did approve to, to spend some money we're going to be acquiring a tour bus so that hopefully we can accommodate um, more of you for uh, for the another Century Village tour, and um, we would be sending the bus here, and uh, we would register for that in, in advance. So I just wanted to give you those updates. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I apologize. I have you on the list, but all right. Good to the order. Anything? Jerry, come on up. Jerry Satoski, I'm the president of the Wellington E Condo Association. I have two items I would like to share with everybody. Um, I don't know how many of you saw the webinars by Phil Massey this week, but uh, if you didn't, one was with, regarding insurance. You may be getting a 35 to 50 percent increase in your building insurance. I don't know if many of you read about what happened in Pembroke Pines, where everybody was hit with a $200 raise in their maintenance oh. due to insurance. And there is no way that you cannot have uh, building insurance for your, for, your, for your association. So it's just something to plan on um, with regard. We don't, Phil did not know what our increase is going to be. There is going to be an increase. But it's just something in your budget to plan on. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention, and I want to thank Donald because he has been uh, instrumental in getting these webinar information out to everybody, is that there was a webinar regarding Century Village and the three-story buildings. And don't kid yourself, this is going to happen with the two-story buildings eventually too, where you have to have this milestone uh, report and then this structural integrity reserve study. Uh, and this is all going to have to be done by the end of 2024. This all has to be in place. And you're looking at a considerable amount of money that you may have to expend. And I would not wait until the last minute to do this. Is it going to be eight line items that you're going to have to f fund in your budgets? Uh, this is something that you really, your boards really need, and your associations really need to plan for. Um, it's a serious issue, and it could be very costly. And I know, and I can speak of my building, that not everybody's going to be able to pay for this. You know, you can't keep on raising the main, uh, you know, maintenance for people who are on fixed incomes. Uh, I don't know if the state realizes this, but right now they're coming down with these mandates about these studies and having reserves and be able to fund. And these are things that you really, really have to plan for in the future. Um, one of the companies that I, I, on this um, webinar that Phil had was Stone Building Solutions. Uh, and they offered a pretty interesting plan. Uh, we're interviewing them on Monday. Actually, we're, we're discussing it at our board meeting on Monday. 
but it's just one of the options that you could think about. You know, you have to have an engineer. Engineer has to go through your building. They have to see if there, what, what repairs you have to plan for, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just something that I really think is very, very serious as far as the, the, uh, the financial considerations for your building and what you need to plan for in the future and taking into account what your association can afford, if you need to go get a loan, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just bringing this to everybody's attention because I think it's very, very important. And December 31st, 2024 is gonna happen tomorrow. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Go ahead, George. Hmm? Yes. The webinar that Jerry just spoke about will be available uh, Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock, on 592. If you missed it, you're, well, you're going to be able to see it all next week. Go ahead, George. Okay, I was contacted by Dorothy Jacks uh, earlier this week. Uh, those of you that don't know, she's the property appraiser for Palm Beach County. Those of you that remember Mike Pratt, he used to come to the meetings here every month and... Uh, uh, he had a setup where you could come and get homesteaded and he take care of your property and what have you had out in the uh, lobby. Well, Mike has retired. Okay, Dorothy's uh, going to have another replacement very shortly. And she said she'd be here. It was either this, this meeting or next month's meeting. So we'll find out what's going on. She says uh, the person's going to be just as... Uh, um, good as uh, Mike was and uh, we had no, no problems and, uh, and she'll handle any questions that you might have. So I look forward to seeing her and I thank her for uh, giving me a call and get a heads up. If there's any questions, we'll get back to her. Thank you, George. Thank you. Go ahead, Drew. Richard. Okay. Uh, just two minor items in light of what has been said. Can't hear you, Rich. Two minor items in light of what has been said about fraud. First of all, many of you and the people you represent probably have received letters ostensibly from FPL warranties for external wiring, possibly another one for plumbing. Throw them out through your monthly assessments. Your association is responsible for any external wiring and plumbing. So do not purchase these warranties. They're totally unneeded. And speaking of outside walls, my building and the building of the person sitting next to me, uh, check those conduit boxes. Uh, Rainwater can rot them out and leave holes in the top. My buildings had to be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Richard. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, I think Jerry gave a very good report and I think there's always an answer to a problem. Now for those of you who haven't discarded the financial report I'd like you to take a look at the last page. Okay. It's a rainbow. It. Okay. Now the last page and a lot of you know what it is is a pie chart. And it has different colors. It's a pie chart. And why does that pie chart here? Because there is a matter of priorities. And yes, everything is going up. My classic story is when I was in practice in New York, I did a lot of bankruptcy work with attorneys. And I had one case where the couple was bankrupt and they still were making payments into the Christmas club, if those of you remember. I said, what are you doing? You're bankrupt. Well, we always gave the kids the money. The reason for this is, if you look at it very carefully, 42% of what we pay is for cable. Now, you could cry and moan about having to pay maintenance. You can cry and moan about insurance, but you could live without 309 channels, and you're talking closing in on $4 million. Now it's up to you. 
there are people who have been following this. Some people say everybody wants all the bells and whistles. According to, I believe, our bylaws, all we have to provide is basic television. So it's something that should be considered. I've been looking at it because you're almost up to what? $40 a month per person, per, hour, per unit? Do you need 309 channels? I don't. Hopefully you don't. So Nobody can. we have to economize where you can economize. And that's one of the focuses that I will be doing. I'm not in charge of the uh, cable, but I do know it can be reassessed, it could be replaced, it could be reduced. So before everybody gets a crying channel, a crying towel for insurance, which keeps you alive in the building safe, think about it. A lot of you people pay $100 extra. That's up to you. But not everybody is so far into watching TV, especially the new people who come in, they see everything on their phone. So, Jerry, that was a good report. But there is a point that you have to say, where can we cut? Not where can we add. And in far as insurance, again, not an expert, but you could always adjust your insurance by taking uh, out where the first loss is greater. So those are things that should be considered and will be considered. So again, give me your thoughts and I will be talking to the people who work with the cable. Yes, ma'am. I, <clears throat> I hope I don't embarrass myself by asking this question, but I, I don't watch the news every day. But in the Yuko Reporter, it talked about shuffleboard and having to have masks and social distance. And am I uh, missing something? I mean, it's that was re like that was put in in error. It was from the time of COVID. That's what it sounded like. Thank you. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, in reference to what Ed was just saying. Uh, about possibly cutting channels, is that what you wanted? Excuse me? You, you're talking about cutting channels. <coughs> no, I'm cutting, I'm talking about cutting costs. Right, yeah. but. If I'm not mistaken, if, if, the ultimate you know, cost uh, uh, was brought up by Mr. Israel, that with an antenna you get 42 channels for nothing. How many people here stream? You know, by, by, by streaming, I mean you, you watch things off the internet, all right? That's getting a lot more popular, all right? And I see the possibility of, in the future of completely eliminating this cable and just having nothing but internet, and then you just stream whatever services you want. A lot of people just don't know how to do Something to think about. Okay. I think they are thinking about it right now. Yep. Okay. Well. I said to bring in your, uh, your suggestions, Bob. Uh, no, I just want to finish up on what Jerry was saying. Um, all your vice presidents for the last two years have been telling you, put your buildings in order, put uh, officers in place that are here to do the bidding of the building and keeping your building up to date including if you have a new tenant or you have a new owner, there should be somebody here in your building with the seal and be able to perpetuate a lease or go through a sale. You cannot imagine how many people come into the Yuko office on a weekly basis and we find out that the seal is out of state. It's illegal, it has to be left in the building. So 
I'm sorry? Within 40, 40 miles. Within 40 miles of your building. So if you're in Chicago or you're in California or you're in Canada, the seal belongs in your building. So for the people that are, I know I'm preaching, preaching to the choir, but make sure that all the information that you need to run your business is left here in the village. And for the upcoming elections that you're going to have, make sure you elect people that are going to be here, not somebody that unfortunately is on a respirator or is in a, is in a nursing home just to fill a box. It's presenting problems for your associations. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, hi. My Please tell us who you are. Okay. Uh, my name is Anne Marie Gallagher Ashby. I live in Wellington M. I think we're the first building who is uh, going under the reconstruction. <laughs> you know, and actually, it's a good thing because it's it's good that that's happening. It, we're all paying. We're going to pay a few thousand dollars each, but it means the building won't fall down on our heads, and that's a good thing. So, uh, well, I would, I just wanted to be very quick. I I have uh, just three proposals. Uh, well, one is, w which I'm going to present later, but um, uh, one is, uh, I am a member of Mount's Botanical Garden, and uh, well, as you know, I hate to be the, I hate, I, I hate negative news, I do, but there is a, a malaria mosquito coming down the coast, okay, from, uh, and uh, from the Tampa area, and I've uh, spoken to uh, Mount's Botanical Garden, who will uh, uh, grow, I know it's, it sounds weak, but it's actually very good, citronella bushes. Mosquitoes can't stand citronella bushes. Now, my, I myself, they also don't like lemongrass. So what I've done is I've volunteered, and I'm putting lemongrass around, uh, and, and uh, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Another time is a possible trunk or treat on Tuesday, October 31st. Uh, maybe that's something uh, we can get together where we could have it here on one side, people park, and the other side we have the trunk or treat. Whoever wants to uh, uh, donate their trunk, you know, and come, and uh, we can invite all our grandchildren, right? And uh, it'll be a fun thing because it was so successful what happened on July 4th uh, at the guest pool. It really was terrific, all right? And I have to applaud whoever put that together. I think it was Eva. You know, and that really was great. You know, the children had a great time and the families had a great time. You know, so we could repeat that with the trunk or treat. And then I have another proposal for uh, cleaning up the pools, uh, which I will speak to Eva about. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any? Okay. In a second. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your long weekend. And remember, the office will be closed on Monday. Okay, Niels, we're all set for 2.30. Okay.